Hey everyone, this is Mike Wolf, and welcome to the Food Tech Show. Today's guest is Arturo Elizondo, who is the CEO of Clara Foods, a company that is making eggs without the animal. That's right, one of the original early, early precision fermentation companies that spun out of that indie bio first cohort has been working at this for some time since 2014. And so they finally released their first product last year and they're moving towards releasing their flagship products. So I talked to Arturo about the origin story of Claire Foods and how they got to where they are and where they're going. As always, if you want to hear more podcasts, just look for the Food Tech Show in wherever you get podcasts. And you can always catch the latest news at The Spoon. Just go to thespoon.tech, subscribe to your newsletter, and you'll get us into your inbox very regularly. So, all right, folks, that's it for now. Let's talk to Arturo. All right. Well, I'm really excited to have Arturo Elizondo, the CEO and co-founder of Clara Foods here on the show today. How are you doing, Arturo? Hey, great to be on here, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to catch up with you because the idea of creating eggs without a chicken or an animal, I think is really <laughs> interesting. And I think it's time has come. And we've heard a lot about kind of plant-based eggs, but yeah. what you're building is is Really interesting technology. And the thing is, Clara Foods has actually been around for a while. You guys have found out what, 2014, 2015? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the end of 2014. And you guys went through that first Indie Bio, the very first Indie Bio cohort, which is, yeah, I've just been talking, catching up lately with Poe Bronson, kind of the new guy, mm -hmm. uh, kind of heading up. But talk a little bit about the origin story of the company, because you come from an interesting background. Why you decided to start the company? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a great question. And, and, you know, the, the us three co-founders have very different backgrounds. You know, Isha from New Harvest, my my co-founder Dave Anshul um, on the microbiology front, and my background really from government. I, you know, I grew up in beef country in Texas, and I'm Mexican by heritage. And so, like any good Texan, I had you know my 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 barbecues every Sunday, and like any good Mexican, had my two eggs for breakfast every morning. And so, animal protein was such a huge part of my life, and I. I never really thought about where my food came from until I made my way into government. My, one of my first internships was working at the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the sub-agency called the Food Safety and Inspection Service, which regulates and oversees every sort of house in the country. And looking under the hood, it, it just blew my mind how incredibly massive the animal protein production complex really was. You know, I had no idea that we slaughtered over a million animals every single hour. And for the first time I connected and, and just, and, and that 1 million is to feed less than 5% of the world population, well, a million animals every single wow. hour. And it's interesting, like, okay, a lot of people get, ex <laughs> Hey, they had this kind of conversion at some point, they realized yeah. they were going up eating animals that were slaughtered and they become activists or they go in some path, but you, who I don't, you weren't a microbiologist or a, a cellular engineer, or a cell act person, um, were working in government. And then all of a sudden, like a couple of years later, you're the head of like a very science forward startup. So how did that happen? Well, I, I so it, it was, it was over a, a quite a period of time. I, I, when I first got passionate about food, and learning about, about how, how our protein was made today just blew my mind. And I, quite honestly, I, just, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I became obsessed. And I, was, and I was starting to look at what are, what are ways that we can feed people in a way that doesn't destroy the planet. That was really like at the end of the day, the crux of you know, my, my multi-year journey. And I, I spent some time in Geneva studying diplomacy, again, thinking about how do I leverage government to, 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 to change our food system. And when, um, and I began scoping out all these different technologies, looked at the plant-based approach, cell-based approach, and fell in love with how you can leverage real, you know, deep technologies to create products that, that people know and love and, and, and that, that, that are able to resemble and in some ways actually outperform the foods that we're eating today so that we don't guilt people into eating better, but that we can make amazing products that really compete in their own right. And so when I, when I, when I looked at the different technologies, I knew that I had to be a part of it in some shape or form. And I didn't know exactly what that was going to look like, but I knew I wasn't going to be doing it in DC. So I, I, 
one day I was talking to my mentor and he's like, why you, you should be leave DC, leave government and go in and do this. Like, what, what are you waiting for? And it really hit me that I, there was no better time to do it than now if, if, if I felt strongly enough about it. And so the next day I booked a one-way through to San Francisco. And, and this was what, no what 2013, 2014? Yeah, 2014, yeah. September 2014. I had no job, no place to stay. I booked a one-way ticket, you know, hoping that I would find, you know, that, that I would find people that I would find the right opportunity. Was the and, idea you would land at a, another company or you wanted to start your own? I, I actually wanted to work. Um, I wanted to to work on the venture capital side, actually deploying capital to companies in the space and, and learn more about the, the space from from that vantage point. Um, but then I realized that, that there were no funds actually investing exclusively in the food, you know, in, in alternative protein or food tech space. Now there are dozens, but then there, there was actually not a single dedicated fund doing this. You know, COSA had had made one investment in Hampton Creek. You know, GV had done, you know, had just invested in Impossible. So there were, there were, there, there were some, you know, there were, there was a little bit there, but not really anything around food tech specifically. And that's when I, I, I was talking to Josh Ball from Hampton Creek and he invited me to go to this conference with him. And, um, and I end up, you know, sitting next to my co-founder, Dave, and my co-founder, Isha, and the, the perfect day guys. And we hit up a conversation and, Dave and I and Nisha got together to, um, Dave had this amazing idea of making eggs without using chickens. And I just fell in love with the concept. Uh, and and I, can, I can explain more why eggs made the most sense. Um, but that was really the beginning of, 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 the, of, of the business. So you show up at a conference and you sat at a certain place and mm-hmm. you met your co-founders there. You just happened to be kind of in a group, started the conversation. Yeah, we <laughs> we were talking about that, that. There was another person in the in the group who was like really against using technology and food, and I was like, and we were just you know, I was like, there's that's the only way to 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 fix our food system. We cannot afford for everyone to be eating free range eggs. Like we, you know, the the, the economics and and the, there's not enough land to yeah. to to accommodate people, you know, accommodate preferences that way, and then have people pay you know seven dollars a dozen for for eggs. And so we were just talking about that. And, and David, Dave, uh, Dave, Isha and I found ourselves in the same side of the argument, advocating for technology and food and how they can really coexist uh, in a beautiful way. And, and, and then we connected afterwards. And, and so uh, I do want to talk, I want to get nerdy a little bit about the technology because <laughs> for the yeah. people who listen to the show may want to get nerdy, understand it. Um, but I, I want to understand this, this, okay, we have a meeting Hey, maybe we got to dinner that night. I don't know what happened, but at yeah. some point you put together a business plan and put it in front of the Indie Bio folks. Like, how did that happen? Tell us about, about that process. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, we went out to, to dinner with actually Alexis Fox who started another company called Lighter with the Perfect Day guys as well. I know Alexis. Uh, you, you do? Yeah. It's a small world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really small world. I actually met her while I was at Harvard in Boston. She, 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 she lived there. And so we got together and, um, and, 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 and Dave just had this amazing idea. He had been finished with his PhD and was looking to also get involved in the alternative protein space. Um, and I had literally moved to San Francisco for that exact same reason. And so Isha brought us together and said, hey, we, we should do something with this. And IndieBio is about to launch their, um, their accelerator in San Francisco and, and, and they're opening up, they have open applications. So we got together and in a coffee shop, started putting a business plan together in the technology roadmap. And we submitted it with an idea on paper and, you know, Ryan, Arvind and Ron at Indie Bio took a bet on us and uh, gave us, gave us some. How long know, did it water. take to put those ideas on paper until they were actually is in front of the Indie Bio folks? <laughs> probably, a, I would say probably a, a month. But that's a great inspiration. Now you had a hardcore scientist, right? I mean, uh, your your co-founder there had the idea already for creating this, and you guys eventually become part of the became part of the OG original um, cohort, right? You guys were there in there before Geltor and some of the other folks. Yeah, yeah. So after us, yeah, Geltor uh, went through Indie Bio, Memphis Meats, yep. uh, Finless Foods, and and New Wave New Wave Foods, and a few others. Um, and yeah, we, we started Indie Bio on March 2015th, and, and, we, and then we, we raised, we're the first company to ever raise out of Indie Bio um, with, our, with our seed round uh, of 1.7 back in, in right before demo day. At the time, was the idea to basically use microbial fermentation, um, was it so developed at that point, and was that what you put in the business plan? 
that is what we put in the business plan. We had a few other ideas of how to make. Ultimately, we knew we wanted to solve the egg, the, the 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 egg problem. The world consumes over a trillion eggs every single year, and even to this date, less than one percent of the market is has you know it, it is is owned by any alternatives because eggs are almost impossible to replace because they're all their functionalities. Um, and so we knew we wanted to go after that. And then after looking at the different technologies, we knew that um, that we wanted to go after producing products that truly replaced it. And so we went the fermentation route. Um, and, and, and yes, it, it sounds it sounds like it's a very new technology, but what most people don't realize is that this technology has been around for 40 years. Like we've made insulin that instead of coming from pigs comes from fermenters from the 1980s. And that is literally, you know, an animal protein made without using an animal. Uh, and so the technology has, has come a long way, but we knew it had been scaled before. We knew that it was possible. And we knew that, um, that, that, from a, that, that it had been used not only to make insulin, but also rennet for cheese making and a few other yeah. products. And so th- there was a lot of excitement around the scalability of this technology and really the power of that if we focus on developing incredible strains of yeast that can produce protein efficiently, the scalability of it was, 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 was very much a very tractable challenge. And so the idea was always on eggs, it sounds like. And so what was the, in your mind, the, how you conceived of it? Was it something where you would actually create eggs to the point where people can make a, like a, a restaurant style egg sandwich at some point, or was it more just a, as a B2B ingredient to kind of provide some, uh, like some oh, yeah. functionality, like as bread processors would make bread. What was the idea and what you wanted to create? So the, the number one objective for us was how do we, we ultimately want to, you know, Clara exists to, to enable the shutdown of the last factory farm on earth. We want to accelerate the world's transition to animal free protein. And so how do we do that as quickly as possible and with the largest scale possible? And for us, the egg was this product that was both very simple and incredibly complex. Um, Simple in that there are no cells in eggs. It's eggs are literally a combination of proteins, fats, and water. And so from a molecular standpoint, it was relatively simple. But um, what most people don't realize is that the complexity of the egg lies in its proteins, where all all the binding, gelling, foaming, aeration, all those properties that make an egg so indispensable. You know, there's a fun fact that, um, you know, the the um, all all, all the folds in a master chef's hat, there's a hundred of them. And that's supposed to represent the 100 different ways to, to cook an egg right. because of how versatile it is. Um, and so we went after the egg mark, the, the egg, because we knew that if we could solve the egg, we could, you know, so many products in the grocery store, it makes it very difficult for anyone wanting to, to eat a diet that is egg free. It's very difficult because there are ingredients in almost half the products in the grocery store. And so we knew that this is a way to make a massive impact. And two is there was a massive ingredient opportunity here because so many companies relied on it, even when prices doubled or tripled you know, um, and with, with avian flu and salmonella and all of the reasons why companies don't want to use eggs, there's still a massive demand for them. And so we knew that, that it was a very sticky product that was very hard to replace and it was hard to replace because it had properties that nothing else did. And those properties came directly from the proteins themselves. And so that's how we decided to build out the technology platform by focusing exclusively on making animal, making animal proteins, starting with, the, with, with egg proteins. And so let's, let's kind of give a, a quick five-year history of the development of the product, right? So you came out of Inibio in 2015. You got an investment. Um, I know that in 2019, you got a bigger, uh, a pretty big investment. You partnered up with, I think, Ingridion was your lead investor. So, yes. And I think you released your very first product in 2020. So I kind of did a high-level overview, but kind of talk a little bit about the evolution towards that first product you launched yeah. this year. Yeah, absolutely. So we've been, you know, we've been very, very knee-deep on R&D. I think for, uh, I think in terms of some of the companies in the space, we've really kept a very low profile, head down. Really, at the end of the day, we knew that the only way to have a massive impact in the food system is to make products that are accessible to everyone, everyone in the world, um, not just for the, you know, for, for the San Franciscans where I live or in the, the, the New Yorkers, but really that we can make it that, that, that this is a product that 
that, that people all over the world, especially in developing countries, have access to. Um, and so we knew that we had to crack the code and push this technology to its limits. So although it had been scaled before, pushing biology in terms of how efficiently can we get yeast and microbes to produce real animal protein was a very difficult technolo- technological challenge. And so we spent the last five years building out our, our core science team, um, bringing, hiring experts from all over the world to develop this core technology and, and, and actually started expressing proteins across the animal kingdom, across you know, all these different species to really fine tune the technology. And then, and as of last year, we're, we, we, we've begun monetizing it. So we launched our first product last year um, and then we're, we're, we're continuing, to, we're launching one later this year and then we're launching the third product. Uh, we're launching the, the next product um, soon after. Okay. And so that first product was, I think you, in our pre-conversation, you called it your MVP and it was a supple, a digestive supplement product. Talk a little bit about the products that are coming next, right? Are we going to get egg egg whites? Are we going to get like uh, kind of egg yolks at some point? Talk about it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, yeah. It's, it's a so um, ultimately with the the number one criteria that we have for our products is number one: can we beat the market today? Can we make a product that is fundamentally better than what an animal makes? And and so that is a criteria that we are not going to compromise and say, oh, it's sustainable, it's vegan, it's et cetera, and, and have people you know, gravitate towards it because of those properties, but really because it just works and it tastes better and, it, and it, it, whatever property it is that we're looking for, that we can outperform it, number one. And then number two is that there's a real market gap for it. So for the first one, for the digestive supplement, um, the supply chains are really terrible for a lot of ingredients and the prices vary a lot. And so reliability is a huge concern for, for a lot of companies. So we developed a product that was very expensive, actually, and, and began um, selling it and, and, and filling the, this gap where we can now unlock the kosher, halal um, and vegan and vegetarian markets that were inaccessible to, to this product. For the second one coming online, it's for beverages. So a lot of, you know, I'm sure you probably had I don't know if you, if you, you drink whey protein, but soy protein or pea protein, all these protein powders and protein drinks, uh, you know, have a lot of improvement in terms of taste. Uh, there's a big gap in terms of having them taste good without adding a bunch of sugar, or artificial sweeteners. And so we're, our, our second product will be targeting the protein beverage mar- market by creating a protein that is a lot cleaner in taste. And so you don't need to add all these other ingredients to get, to give people the nutrition and the taste that they, uh, that they crave and doing it in a really clean, sustainable way. And then the, 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 the rest of the pipeline is in fact our egg white replacer as our flagship. And then we're, we're also, we also have plans to do, um, do the, 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 the broader egg product and we have the team has done an incredible job on that. And there's a lot of uh, there's actually a, we're going to have an entire egg portfolio of ingredients that are target various different applications. Right. Uh, so it sounds like you guys have been doing basically building blocks and moving towards like a full flagship product and, and getting more doing B2B products at some point five mm-hmm. years from now. Am I going to be able to go to the store and buy a, a, a Clara branded Egg product, a store, is that part of the plan to actually do a, a B2C product that actually shows up in retail? Yeah, no, not, not at the moment. We, okay. we will have opportunities to bring the product to life ourselves in small ways to really help you know, bring it to life for, for a lot of our partners. But we knew deep down that for me, my number one mission is to have the biggest impact possible. And for us, that is most, that, that is the fastest way to do that is by partnering with the world's largest companies to, to have to have that impact as soon as possible. And then after that, you know, I think we can get creative in terms of how we bring them, you know, whether we, we launch brands ourselves, but for now, really the focus is driving, driving scale and impact through, through partners and continue to developing really kick-ass products ourselves. So you guys are basically an egg technology platform company and you're finding partners who have those established lines of distribution. And at some point you might do like maybe a perfect day thing they did with Bray Robot exactly. where they, they did a, an ice cream spin out, but it sounds for the time being, you guys are, are satisfied to being completely B2B. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. I mean, the, the thing is like these companies have distribution everywhere in the world. Like they have NASA products, their customers love them right. and they all want to use alternative proteins, but they're like, look, we just, the toolkit we have is crap. We either have, you know, all these proteins 
either have a really gritty taste, chalky function, you know, chalky flavor, or just don't foam or bind or gel in the ways that we need them to. And so our products end up becoming subpar compared to, you know, their animal versions. And so our goal is how do we equip these companies so that their products can really compete head to head and in some ways just blow everything else out of the water. And so I'm excited to share that some of our partners are launching truly world first, where there are products that are not possible today using, whether using traditional eggs or using plant proteins that are not possible to do using, using fermentation. And launching through partners, uh, I'm curious about uh, the challenges you may face. So I feel like one of the challenges like perfect day had, and then ultimately their partner in, in, in brave robot ice cream is like explaining cow milk without the cow, right? The, these yeah. proteins, how do you explain, have you given a lot of thought about how you're going to explain this is actually basically the same egg, egg proteins that you're getting with eggs, but there's no chicken involved. I mean, how do you do consumer education through your business model? Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a great question. And that, and so for several of our partners, you know, we actually do a lot of our own consumer research and we are going to have, you know, a, a you know, we're, we're actually revamping our website, revamping our, our communications materials and bringing in resources so that we do really partner with these companies because they're actively, you know, they they're, they can make kick-ass products. But two is there is a way to celebrate the story where people get really excited about, wow, I can eat, I can have the bioavailability of egg protein without the salmonella risk, you know, without all these different, you know, different risks. And so there's um, there's a really there's a real beauty to that, and I think for us we're we're still working to craft um, the, the the message. But initially, when we launch, they won't be you know we won't just be you know a random ingredient on the on the back label. We're actively going to be partnering with these companies, um, similar to how some of our other peers have done it, where we get featured you know side by side, and we are actively telling the story alongside them to ultimately ensure that people understand what we're doing and, and truly like the, the, the value of it. But at the end of the day, that's part of that story. At the end of the day, you know, our objective is let the product speak for itself. At the end of the day, most people don't even read the ingredient statement. And so, I'll, you know, we want to tell that story and it'll be great. But for the most part, people are just going to get the best tasting product on, you know, on the shelf. And whether it's vegan or not, uh, you know, for a lot of people, it, it's not even part of the question. It's like, is it good? And does it give me, you know, does it give me what I want? And, and, and that's ultimately where we want to, where, where, where we want to be and the reason why we chose this technology to ultimately um, make that happen. With cell, cell ag or culture-based yeah. meat, for example, um, it, there's a lot of, t- you know, you can have like your sashimi fish, right? Or you can have, yeah. uh, maybe you have your uh, cer- a certain type of cat beef. Um, how is it going to play out with this technology for eggs, right? Are we going to make a chicken-based egg that, um, or can I have duck eggs? How yeah. flexible is the platform and, and can we get all these variants? Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm, so one is, it is very flexible and that's why we, We've spent so much time on the R&D front. Like we wanted to have a real kick-ass platform that is not just a chicken egg plant protein platform or an egg protein platform, but a true animal protein production platform uh, so that we can flex in and out of different products. And we've already developed a few different products that, 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 that are in R&D that are completely removed from the chicken itself and, and from the egg itself. So yes, number one is that it's definitely possible. Um, and, and, and I think for, for us, there's a real beauty to that because there are flavors and textures and functionalities that our palate is not even used to. And so it opens up these possibilities for like what, you know, the egg itself has over 200 different proteins, many of which have not even been named before. So if you had, if you ate an egg this week, you ate over 200 proteins and we still don't even know what we're eating in the chicken egg <laughs> and let alone like all of these different proteins that are in other foods uh, and other eggs. And so really like it, it, it's, it's amazing. And, and um, because we're truly entering the age of molecular food, not just molecular gastronomy, but actually like lev- how do we leverage the molecular element of it in producing the next generation of ingredients to build food 2.0 with new textures, new properties, new, new flavors that are not even possible to achieve right now with our current, you know, animals as a technology. What's the future of the egg? If I look 
10 years or 20 years down the line, how much of the eggs I eat in, in processed food or products I buy from the store or I get at a restaurant are going to be dried using technology like yours versus from an animal? And mm-hmm. then like at some point, where does this go? How, how evolved does yeah. your technology go? I mean, so that, that, that's the beauty. That's a, such an excellent question. And that's precisely why we use this technology in particular, because we want that as soon as we had, as soon as we were able to prove out the products are delicious and great, that we could scale up production massively. And the beauty of fermentation is that we can plug and play into most aerobic fermenters. So most breweries that use aerobic fermenters, we can plug and play into any facility in the world for the most part. And that gives us the ability to, to, to have an a, a decentralized approach, but two is to scale um, a lot faster across the world and have a global footprint. Um, and so to your point on like in the next five to 10 years, I think in 10 years, my, um, you know, our expectation, our goal is that by 2028, Clara becomes the largest supplier of egg protein in the world. Um, and ultimately our target is um, that with these technologies and the scalability of them, um, that in 10 years, we will have flipped the, the, um, the dynamic where right now the vast, the 90, 90% of eggs, you know, or I think now it's like 75% of eggs come from battery cages in the U S but, you know, even, but over 90% of them come from factory farms more broadly. And that, and that's not because those are the best eggs that are being made. It's because they're the cheapest eggs that are being made. And that's what gets used as ingredients. And for us, now that we have a technology that fundamentally on a bio- biological level is more efficient than a chicken, and with fermenters instead of factory farms, you can reach even more efficiency, is as soon as we're a penny cheaper, we can start owning that market. And so our goal is to actually flip that market so that the vast majority of eggs, especially those used as ingredients, because economics drive everything in that market, we can we can we can eat away at that market and then continue you know br- partnering with companies to bring the um, to go after the 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 retail segment. What's the biggest challenge to achieving that twenty twenty eight vision? Um, I think one of the things I keep hearing from a lot of companies in the space is yeah. uh, building out that infrastructure, going from pilot production to to scale production. Certainly, that's true in in culture, but I'm curious. It seems like from in, kind of precision ferment products are a little bit ahead of that. What is the biggest challenge to scaling to that vision? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's a great question. Number one is biology only goes so far, right? It, 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 so quickly. Like yeah. I think today we're dealing with a biological organism. And so, you know, we have to go through iterations and, and there's been an inherent, you know, risk in any biotech company that at the end of the day, like we are, you know, biology is both a science and an art, um, and so there, there, there is that, that challenge of continuing to drive up yields, you know, year after year and getting more and more efficient. Um, and I, I, I would say the, the scalability of it, fortunately, that one is an issue solved with money. Um, and, and ultimately for us, there is also that element of, of time of making sure that the, those fermenters are up and running as we continue growing the market so that we can ultimately have, you know, make sure that there, there's, a, there's a real supply demand matrix there but for the most part the for us the challenge really is um it is, is a lot less focused on the manufacturing because that fortunately there's a lot of companies that literally rent out fermenters as a business uh and so we can plug and play into multiple multiple of those well thank you so much arturo where can people find out more about what you're building yeah Clarifoods.com and we're actively hiring. We are looking for chemical engineers, molecular biologists, so shameless plug. We are <laughs> we are hiring and we're looking for very talented, but especially very passionate people. We, I, I, like I always said, we hire for missionaries, not mercenaries. And we want people to, 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 to join us for the long haul to truly transform our food system. So I really appreciate the opportunity to, to share our story, Michael. And once we are all vaccinated, we'd love to have you at the lab so you can so you can so you can taste the future. I'm excited to taste the future and, and going on a tour. I love touring factories. Thank you so much, Arturo.